was in it. So that entire concept was hers. Now, what is interesting is that um, I and Tutumdi, we were always trying to look for the usual big names, uh, and but. Uh, we did not realize that a publisher like Neogi would be interested because Neogi basically does much more visual, photo-oriented books, and this is this is slightly scholarly. So we were not sure exactly as to how many um, you know likes we would get from Neogi. So we were very surprised when they agreed. Uh, and uh, and you know and yesterday I was just informed that all the copies are sold out so so clearly thank you um, so so this is this is uh, this is it's, it's it's quite a historic event because it was published in 2016 but it has been selling regularly so every year I've been getting the royalty checks so it is a steady seller. Uh, Yes, so far because nobody was interested and I think Neogi deserves praise because they were um, they were courageous enough. They were courageous enough to, to deal with a subject that Neogi had not dealt with before. So this is the first queer book. Uh, and now they have got the second queer book that's coming up. Yeah. We're going to be talking about that book also, but before that actually yeah. Uh, talk a few words about your article that yes, is there. Yes. So it's Chopul Rani. So Chopul Rani slash Chopul Yeah. How that switching happened in, in the life of Chopul Bhaduri? So could you please uh, kind of uh, but, uh, enlighten us? Uh, yeah, so Chopul Bhaduri is actually related to uh, the Shishi Bhaduri, yes, yes. the, the very, very famous uh, dramaturg. Um, so Chokul Dad, you know, he was, even as a child, he used to model his behavior on his mother. Um, and his mother was like the role model. Uh, and so therefore, um, when as a child he was offered female parts, he wasn't quite sure whether he wanted to do it or not. Uh, but it was Eastern Railway that decided that, uh, you know, we are looking for somebody to play Marjina in Alibaba uh, and Marjina. And he says, why don't you do the role of Marjina? So that is when it began. For a very long time, he functioned under the name of Chokul Bhaduri. But when he started to take part in Jatra, it was the custom that if you play the female role, you added Rani behind your name. So, so therefore, yeah, that's it, you know, that, that is when, yeah. And I asked him, at what specific moment does the transformation happen? And he says, when I put the lipstick on. Very interesting. Yeah, he says that if everything is done, I'm wearing my makeup. But the moment I put the lipstick on, that is when I'm no longer Chabot Bhaduri. That is when I become Chabot Bhaduri. Yes, yes. So, uh, so I'm very interested in knowing the fact that how this becoming, Yeah, um, I, I really think it was a mixture of both. I think it was a mixture of both. Because in a very... I mean, I was quite surprised when Chopulda said that uh, you may not believe me, but there are certain days in the year when I feel especially weak. So he's clearly referring to menstruation. Uh, and he says that is the time when I'm especially weak. That is the time when I have a heightened sex drive. And, and I, I heard it and I thought, are you trying to suggest that your body is perhaps mimicking, you know, what, what women experience during menstruation? And he said, yes. So therefore, in a very strange way, although he is a man, but he started to acquire certain sort of physical sensations that we normally associate with women. I personally know that your perception on the androgyny has changed over the years. Yes. So, yes. Uh, 
yes. if you have any scope right now, if you have any opportunity to, uh, to write on uh, this uh, area, this concept, that is a difficult I I wish you hadn't asked me that question. I wish you hadn't asked me that question. That is also non-normative. Yeah. So um, you're right. I think I have now moved away from androgyny because the way in which the term is defined, it's andros and gynos, so it's male and female. I regard myself as a post-structuralist feminist. So I don't, be, I don't know what is male, I don't know what is female anymore. So therefore androgyny, the term, it does not have that meaning that it once had. I would, I would probably just call it queer. I would just call it queer. Because queer, which is why I have put queer in the title of my next book. Because I think that queer helps us to, you know, get out of the rigid box of male, female, man, woman. Okay, coming to that question, yeah. uh, my next question is actually focusing on the chopper identity. Yes. Yes. That it falls apart, the intelligible masculinity, the yeah. idea of intelligible yeah. masculinity. So what is your take that uh, what should be our responsibility to accept that kind of alternate forms of masculinity? So, um, what should be our, uh, just, our just just of, just be open to the idea just be open to the idea that uh one of that to be very honest i don't know what is masculinity anymore i'm so sorry i don't know what is femininity anymore all that i know is that there are different ways of gender presentation i know what is gender I know what is gender, but I don't know what is specifically masculine. I don't know what is specifically feminine. So if you say it is blurred in the lines, there are many masculinities, there are many femininities. If you today say that, sir, this black and white sari that I'm wearing, this is my masculinity, I cannot say no. I cannot say, I can say, no, it is a sari. It is a women's garment. It cannot be. I do not have the right to say that anymore. I can't. So therefore, I think blurs have happened across the whole gender spectrum. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm so sorry, but I keep going back to the term queer because queer to me, um, so it, it accommodates. Yeah, Q U double E R. Q U double E R. Um, I think that queer. So my favorite adjective is the acceptance of the, the, my, uh, the kind of correct. So my favorite adjective for my favorite adjective for the term queer is generous. Generous. Exactly. It is generous. It, is it, it encompasses a lot. So therefore, I I think it is generosity. Yes. So generosity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, can you imagine that uh, normally when we talk about theory? Um, it's, it's always an intellectual exercise. I was just having a conversation yesterday. But queer, the term makes me very emotional because it is so welcoming and it is so limitless. And the only thing that queer cannot stand is rigidity. And, and that is what makes it so much. Yes, so coming to your next upcoming book, that is Entering the Maze. Yes. So it is a translation no, no, no. of the book. Yeah. Uh, okay. so, <laughs> yeah. So there's a translation of the book on the Maze. So um, like you have collected and you have gone through this process of uh, kind of collecting data on your book, was actually very difficult because these works were not published. No. So you had to uh, go through a very difficult process. So yeah. How was that journey? very lucky. I was very, very lucky. Uh, I will have to mention Shayanton Mitro, Shayanton did his PhD under my supervision. It was Shayanton who basically said, why don't you read this writer? Um, and I had no idea who Krishna Gopal Mollik was. So I began to read his work and I was astonished. I was like, oh my God, you know, here is a married man. Here is a man who has a child. Uh, he belongs to the Moldic family. This is the same family that gave you uh, Raja Shubod Moldik. Yeah, the Shubod Moldik square. Yeah. You, can, you belong to that family, wealthy, prestigious, upper class. 
and you are talking about your homosexuality with a frankness which just blew my mind. I mean, he actually says one of the first sentences in his novel, uh, strangely called Ahmad Primikara, which is my girlfriend's, it begins by saying, I am 125% homosexual. 125% homosexual. This is a man who is married. This is a man who has children. And that is the way in which he's talking. And he was so open about it. Random young men that he would meet, he would say, oh, please be careful because young, good-looking young men are not safe in my company. <laughs> Unbelievable that you'd be safe. And it's not hush-hush in, in the middle of a room. Inside College Square, in a public place, this is what he's talking about. Wow. And uh, in your novel, the scholar also, yeah. you have referred to uh, the character, who is going to the park and after yes. that he is running uh, yes. out um, of this relationship. Yeah. To a certain extent, he is not also kind of uh, accepting that relationship. Then yes. he is in a relationship. Yeah. So how yeah. is that kind of relationship? Uh, that helped you to write uh, the, the weird thing is that when I read, when I wrote the novel, I did not know about Krishna Gopala. Oh my God. I had no idea. That is very identical. It is very, very, so I had no idea that somebody like Krishna Gopal existed. So I wrote the novel first and Krishna Gopal appeared later. So it's like, I, you wrote about me. Yes. Um, so, so it was a very strange discovery for me. But... But you know, the basic difference between Sanjay Chaturvedi and Krishna Gopal Molli is that Sanjay Chaturvedi could never be honest about his relationship. Krishna Gopal Molli is completely honest. So I think that is the most important uh, difference. Why do you think that he hadn't published his words? Because he had the emphasis to publish his No, he did. He did. He did. He did publish his work. But his, his publications all happened in little magazines. These are magazines that nobody has heard of. Hava Uno Ponchash, nobody's heard about it. Kourav, nobody's heard about it. Golfo Kovita, nobody's heard about it. That is the kind of magazine. In fact, if you just go out uh, of this pavilion, if you go towards gate number, uh, gate number seven, you are going to find a tiny, tiny stall with Kourav written on it. Kourav published most of his work. But what is sad is that when I went to Kourav and when I asked them where are copies of Krishna Gopal Mullik's novels, they couldn't give me any. So they published it, they sold out and they did not reprint it. Yeah. That's a huge well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that after the book comes out, uh, that there is going to be um, a renewal of interest and uh, hopefully they are going to reprint. Uh, what I'm hoping for is that some big publisher will perhaps take it, you know, because code of, I mean, what kind of circulation has code of? Not much. But if today, I don't hope for Anundo, but, but there is... Mitru and Ghosh, if somebody slightly Rupa major, there, Rupa. Yeah. So if, if if some some kind of a publisher, uh, you know, takes it up, I think that would be good. So I'm, I'm just just I want him to be famous. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Questions from everybody else. Yeah. 
it is said that one moment in life changes our thought. Yeah. Since you are writing a lot about sexuality. Yeah. What happened in your life that got you curious and interested in this subject? I think uh, this is very much about the way in it, 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 it's a combination of the way in which sexuality and gender was presented to me uh, and then the way in which I experienced it. And I saw that there is a disconnect. There's a disconnect. So, so the way in which gender was presented to me, the way sexuality was presented to me, in my own life, it wasn't making sense. It's like something's not making sense. It's not adding up. And so, but I did not really know how to mentally process that. Because when I was beginning to explore my sexuality, uh, books were not available. There was nothing there. So it was much later, from the 1990s onwards, that books start to become available. I go to the US, um, that is where I read up. Uh, and then gradually, oh, aha, so there is a name. Aha, so, so there are theories. And then I begin to read up, and then gradually, I have a sense of, of what it is. And, and now I teach. I teach gender, I teach sexuality. So, so once I once I began to understand that the way in which society presents gender and sexuality is all wrong, then I started to do my own bit of writing. Not only writing, but R I G H T I N G writing. So not only writing, but writing. That's a difficult thing, actually. Yes. So, so I think I think it's been. And I'm still educating myself. I'm still educating myself because uh, our understanding of gender and sexuality is changing every second. So I have to acquaint myself with new terms. You know, when I started reading about gender, the term sapiosexual wasn't there. Demisexual wasn't there. Uh, absolutely. Uh, asexual wasn't there in that sense. So then I had to acquaint myself to all of these terms. There are new terms that are coming out every day. So it's a continuing education and I'm, and I'm learning all the time. Since you said you are writing something, yeah. what is one thing you want to correct immediately? Oh my God! I have that answer ready. Uh, get rid of gender binary. Stop it. Stop with the male, female, man, woman, boy, girl, pink, blue. Stop this nonsense. It's gone on for far too long. There are more than two colors in the world. There are more than two genders in this world. Let's get out of these two horrible boxes. Um, let us understand that in this world, there are no boxes. So we have introduced a course called New Studies. So that, that was introduced. 2009 actually, 9. Yeah. Yes. Third batch of his course. So it was Yes, so first semester. They're coping well. They're coping well. They're coping well. So it's very interesting course uh, that we encountered. Probably uh, it was difficult for us to initially to, uh, to understand what is gender. So he helped us thoroughly. Uh, and now when we are entering into our life, like a marital stage, whether it is a marital stage, whether we are uh, not marrying, so we have reason for doing so. Yeah. We, we are in a position where we can cope up with our life, cope up with our difficulties in life. So that helped a lot. So, so I don't experience that too. Yeah, you had a follow-up question. Yeah, so what change a person experiences after going through your course or reading books, what is that experience you want them to have with them for a longer period in time? I think the first thing is for them to realize that the gender binary is nonsense. I think the first thing that they realize is that we have to get rid of this, you know, this is a man, this is a woman, this is a male, this is a female. No need for that. Um, if somebody wishes to identify themselves as a man, no problem. But I can't go around calling people, you're a man, you're a woman, it's not my place. 
So if you wish to identify yourself as a man, you have every right to do that. If you wish to identify yourself as a woman, every right to do that. But I'm not going to go and tell them, oh, you know what, you're a man, you should dress like this, you're a woman, you should dress like that. So if there's one thing that I want to change in people, stop being prescriptive. Don't prescribe what is the right way to do gender. All ways of doing gender are right. As a, as a father of 8 year old daughter, yeah. how would uh, 